everybody and welcome to this review note. In this clip we are going to be enabling the OSPF routing protocol on a number of routers. You can see the basic topology I've got set up here to plot, uh, test this. have four routers. Each one of them has two interfaces. The top interfaces here are gigabit zero on all four of my routers. They are all on the 10.100.1.0 network as we'll see in a minute. And then on the second interfaces I've got 192.168.something uh, networks. They're all different, obviously, because they're on different interfaces, and they'll all be communicating with each other using OSPF and advertising their routes. First thing I'm going to do over here on router 1 is configure that up with a router ID. Now, router IDs are pretty important because they're used in elections in a broadcast network and if I go back to my topology for a second, we can see that since these guys are all connected into a switch, this is actually a broadcast network uh, with Ethernet up uh, here on the top. These guys down here are all point to point. We'll go back over to router one again. Go into global config. The way that we set a router ID is setting an IP address on a loopback interface. If we don't do that, what will happen is the router will grab a router ID, which is going to be the highest IP address on a physical interface. Now, if I look at my physical interfaces right now and see what the IP addresses are, we'll see that they've been set up to work on the network. So gigabit zero and one are now configured. Uh, gigabit 0, 10100.1.1, gigabit 1, 192.168.88.1. If I didn't do anything else, the router ID right now would be this IP address. It's the highest IP address on a physical interface. Problem with that is if I ever change my interfaces around and somehow I add another IP address that's higher than this, my router ID is going to change and that's going to cause a reconvergence of OSPF. Which I do not want to have happen, and that's why we use loopbacks. It's really interesting and easy to do. I'm going to say interface loopback. Oops. If I can hit the right key. Interface loopback zero. Hit enter. You'll see that the protocol automatically comes up. I'm going to say IP address. This is going to be the highest address of all four routers, and we'll look at why that is a little bit later on. And notice that I'm using a 32-bit address. Since we don't have to communicate with that, this address or route anything to it, that is perfect for what we want to do. Hit Enter. I have to reload. So get out of global config or config mode. Save out my configuration. and run the reload command. While this is reloading, when we're finished, I'm going to come back and I'll actually enable OSPF on this particular router. And then I'll go away and you can enable OSPF on all the other routers, which I'll do too. They're basically the, exactly the same thing. All right, so we'll hit enter to get started. Go into privilege mode, and then I'm going to change into uh, global config once again. And the way that I enable uh, dynamic routing protocol, use the router command. The question mark after that, we can see all of the different protocols that we can possibly configure. BGP, EIGRP, OSPF, and RIP. Uh, OSPF is the one we want. So say OSPF, and then I spe to specify a process ID or a PID. I'm just going to use one. That can be anywhere from one to 64K, so 65535. It can be the same on all routers. It can be different on routers. It doesn't matter. But common practice is that we use the same PID on all the routers just because it makes it a lot easier. We don't have to go and look it up if we want to make any config changes. That's all there is to that. It's now enabled. Uh, we can make other changes to that process. I'm not going to do that for now. 
That's a wrap for the video. Hopefully this was helpful for you, and we'll see you next time.